yeah, I was fed up too. And that's why I'm running for president of the United States as an independent. That was Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s first campaign ad since he jumped from the Democratic Party to run as an independent. Not only surprised some people with the announcement, but also surprised some people when he said the United States should provide Israel with, quote, whatever it needs to defend itself. His comment prompted swift response from the Libertarian Party, which invited disenfranchised anti-war supporters of RFK Jr. to join their movement. Joining us now to discuss this further is Angela McArdle, the chair of the Libertarian Party. Welcome back, Angela. Hey there. Thanks for having me. So this was a pretty stunning rebuke. There was a tweet that followed RFK Jr.'s commitment to giving Israel whatever it needed. The Libertarian Party tweeted, we are the only ones who are actually anti-war in every context, not just when it's convenient. Were you surprised? Tell, tell me a little bit about the background of the choice to come up with such a strong statement, because certainly it does seem like there was some advantage, some mutual advantage to J RFK Jr. linking up with the Libertarian Party. He's a huge name. He could help get uh, to certain um, voting minimums that get you ballot access and federal funding and all of these kinds of things. You know, was it a difficult choice? Or walk me through the choice to come out and very strongly say, this is a break with our ideals that we cannot ignore. Oh, well, that's not my choice. Mm. I'm so sorry. I thought I'd made that pretty clear behind the scenes that I think that his social media team jumped the gun or possibly he did on that tweet. And, you know, I didn't connect with with my social media team on sending out that message. I, I don't actually I don't control the Twitter. I, I have a lot of faith and trust in the people that do. But sometimes we just don't perfectly communicate things through social media. And so, you know, my understanding is potentially Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has walked this statement back. And to that extent, you know, people might walk back their, their statement uh, condemning him for his uh, maybe potentially pro-war stance. Well, let's talk about this broader tendency on, you know, on the right um, to, to in, in the wake of what has happened, say, you know, we need, to, we need to give even more military aid to Israel. At the same time, many on the right were realizing that the, a lot of the American people, a lot of their own supporters and voters, you know, are, are not on board with unlimited, yep. endless military funding of what's going on in Ukraine, despite, you know, being totally sympathetic with the plight of, you know, oppressed and invaded and, and, and harmed people everywhere, that doesn't obligate the American taxpayer to do something about that. So many on the right, or at least some, I don't know, not, by no means everyone, and certainly not the people controlling the Republican Party, and, and of course not the people controlling the Democratic Party, realizing that this isn't a good policy. But now when this happens, turn around and say, but we have to send even more military aid um, to Israel. You know, uh, contrast that with what the Libertarian Party stands for. Absolutely. I think a lot of people had, understandably so, some really emotional reactions to what they heard it happened in Israel. There was, you know, horrific bombings. Uh, I'm sorry, um, horrific kidnappings, uh, you know, murdering people. It's pretty, pretty atrocious. But the, the United States has had a very messy, ugly foreign policy for a really long time. The Libertarian Party stands against that. We don't believe that the United States should be involved in overseas wars. And as well-meaning as it can be, especially when people have really strong emotional reactions to things, sending the United States military overseas to, quote unquote, sort things out or spread democracy tends to make things a lot worse. And the Middle East is a really complicated situation. We have not had peace there for a very long time. It, uh, it certainly would behoove us to leave with a message of peace, but I don't think that we should be over there with our military trying to export it or, or force people to have peaceful arrangements. Do you think the American people share that view? I always suspect that the people are more, uh, are more inclined toward a non-interventionist foreign policy, but the elites in the major political parties misread that. They eventually figure that out when they're, because the wars are much less popular among the people than they are among party elites, but they, they, they fail to learn that, that lesson every time something new happens. Yeah, absolutely. I do think people, especially at this particular point in time, are very tired of aggressive foreign policy. They're starting to see it through the lens of the taxpayer dollar as well. They would rather have their money in their pocket at home. It's starting to really come across as ridiculous to send money overseas when we have so many issues here at home, uh, inflation, uh, ex expensive groceries, you know, people feel the pain at the pump. And after the Iraq war, especially, I think that people have start to caught on and, and they realize that this is just not working out. 
So I want to ask you some follow-up questions about that kind of explosive revelation that we opened this interview with, Angela. It was the presumption of many, given that the, 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 how strong the statement of the Libertarian Party Twitter account was, that this was a reflection of a real values break. Again, uh, the character of what RFK Jr. has said about the relationship with Israel, with Israel is as follows. He said, Israel will need to wage a sustained military campaign. America must stand by our ally throughout this operation. He he has spoken even before this crisis begun in a way that is frankly out of step with much of the rest of his foreign policy ideology about the deep commitment he believes that America should maintain to Israel and the implications of that being a financial commitment are pretty clear to a lot of people. So the fact that he maybe have, has walked back the statements that he made just in this past week as he was leaving the Democratic Party, to many aren't going to come as much reassurance as to whether or not he actually is an anti-interventionist and someone who would ever compromise the over $3 billion in funding the United States gives to Israel every year. So that being the case, are you saying that the Libertarian Party would still be willing to work, uh, to run with and support a candidate like RFK Jr.? Potentially, people have Twitter gaffes all the time. You know, we've had them. But what I I'm think saying that we is need that to extend a, a little gaffe. bit more grace. Well, Angela, what I'm pointing to is a long history of him making these kinds of statements. Mm -hmm. You're not concerned that that is the real RFK Jr.? Can I be concerned, but also willing to potentially work with someone and help guide their foreign policy? I would hope so. And I think that right now we have a real opportunity to break the two party system in a meaningful way and. If I need to extend a hand in faith and try to help someone work through their foreign policy challenges or make sure they have the right people on their team, I'd absolutely do that. I think it's really important for the health of the nation and, you know, potentially the greater world. I think the, the concern that people have, especially on the left, who many of whom abandon RFK Jr. over his inconsistencies on this issue, is that he actually does have an amazing team. He has people like Dennis Kucinich as his campaign manager, who very much know better and have been strong anti-war advocates for a very long time. His choice to double down when pressured or persuaded by people who are very knowledgeable, whether they be... Um, uh, someone like uh, Glenn Greenwald, who tried gently to walk him to a more anti-war position on this issue. Uh, he, ta he seemed to agree to have a debate with Max Blumenthal at one point, a friendly debate. Max Blumenthal is someone who was very sympathetic to his campaign, but then reneged in the last minute and has refused to have a conversation going forward about his views on Israel. This was all, of course, before the violence erupted last weekend. At a certain point, Angela, I do think people are going to ask, at what point does it become naive to believe that someone's decades-long, long-standing position on an issue that, frankly, has lost him a lot of support already is going to be changed at this juncture? Sure. That's a, that's a reasonable concern. You know, my position is that I'm just not going to go around attacking people that I think are going to be our strong allies, and I'd rather work with them and try to move them in the right direction. And, you know, I think Dave Chappelle said it best, Twitter is not a real place. And so, you know, sometimes we just got to calm down and reach out to someone behind the scenes or someone on their campaign staff and find out what's going on. Uh, having said that, I respect Max Blumenthal's position. I think he does fantastic journalism. He really knows his stuff on foreign policy. And sometimes we're going to diverge a little bit, and that's okay. Ultimately, I chair the Libertarian Party. I'm not running RFK Jr.'s campaign. He has announced, at least for now, to go independent. So we're going to have a little bit of differences here and there. But, uh, you know, I'm going to guide as much as I can to move in the right direction. And on this particular topic, that's peaceful foreign policy. So mm. you don't know till you till you try. Fair enough. Thank you so much for joining us, Angela. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much.